my first goal is if I don't, if I, which in most cases, let's say 80 to 90 percent of the time, yeah, this is a the direct uh, conversation with the decision maker in the call coding process is a no go. So I can't get hold of them. So what I'm doing, I talk to other people and. My aim is to find, and there's always one, this is what my promise to you personally, in every company there's always one influencer, some person who works within the department of your target market, who is willing to talk. Hello, very welcome. My name is Thomas Klein from Klein Marketing in Germany and today I want to talk about a really big misunderstanding uh, when it comes to cold calling. Yeah? Um, a lot of people in the industry of sales and marketing um, know that cold calling isn't, is a bit tricky yeah? and it has not become uh, a lot easier in recent times. So here I want to talk about a couple of methods that we use successfully in real life. So there's no theory, so on a daily basis. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's start up with, yeah, what is the actual goal? The actual goal in call calling obviously is um, trying to sell a product or service to um, yeah, our target market. Yeah? And uh, first of all, we need to get hold of the decision maker. Yeah, and everybody knows that. So basically, the decision maker is called the decision maker because he is gonna sort of like um, make does the decision in the end of the day. And so everybody is trying to call the decision maker. This is this is the first thing everybody has in their mind. Usually, you have some influencer and in, in sitting in front of the. The decision maker um, who are kind of like filtering out um, the information that the, the decision maker is going to receive. So in in various cases, or in many cases, it's very hard to get hold of the decision maker. And this is basically where a lot of people already um, fail in this whole cold calling process. So basically, they they buy a bunch of addresses, yeah, let's say a thousand addresses, and out, out of these a thousand addresses, they identify maybe 800 decision makers, and out of these 800 decision makers, they only get, get through to, let's say, 50 decision makers and all the rest, yeah, that they can't get through, and um, they sort of like, they bang their head against the wall, basically, yeah, and they try like 50 times, and uh, then you have these, like, lists of call attempts, yeah, call attempts, 50 call attempts for this decision maker, um, who, number one, number two, uh, 100 attempts for another decision maker, and so on and so on, and this is not going anywhere, and that's just a waste of time and, mar and a waste of your marketing budget. So the way how we work in this approach is that we say, okay, we want to get hold of the decision maker, all right, we want to this is quite important, but what's also important, and maybe in the early stage of the call calling process, even more important than right away talking to the decision maker, is this, is gathering information. And uh, why, why is it so important gathering information? Now you, the, one of the other salesperson might say, well, uh, what's the, so different between getting hold of the decision maker, talking to the decision maker and gathering information is the, because I can gather information from an influencer very easily. Yeah, very easily. I can talk to other people that revolve around my original decision maker target market uh, that have that have in the work in the department that work in um, in other departments that have to do with the uh, this department and my first goal 
is if I don't, if I, which in most cases, let's say 80 to 90 percent of the time, yeah, this is a the direct uh, conversation with the decision maker in the call coding process is a no go. So I can't get hold of them. So what I'm doing, I talk to other people and. My aim is to find, and there's always one, this is what my promise to you personally, in every company there's always one influencer, some person who works within the department of your target market, who is willing to talk here, yeah, to chat a lot. If you ask the right questions, if you find the right people, uh, the right person, um, he's going to have time. The, in every company, I always find people working in a certain department that have the time to talk a lot. And then you ask them the questions and you get a lot of information. And uh, don't get it wrong that uh, a lot of, of the, the actual um, employees in a company have a lot of information. They have a lot of information. Some people who not in the decision maker but who've been working 10 years in the department and maybe know more about the department than the decision maker who's been only hired newly there for and has been working only for three months. Yeah? So try and get hold of an influencer or somebody who likes to talk within the department and ask him, yeah, so to say, like squeeze the lemon, yeah, suck him out, gather information. This is this is what we need. Yeah. We need to be able to profile our target market. And if we can't go do it directly with the decision maker, which in most cases we can't, yeah, do it with other people. What we need is the information. Yeah? This is what we need, the information. And uh, it doesn't matter where it comes from, first of all. And sometimes, uh, sometimes of some of these influencers, they, they even know more than the actual decision maker. Yeah? I mean, he does the decisions, but he's maybe new in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the company and there might be some really veterans like working in this company who know a lot more about everything that's going on in this company. And they like to chat because they're bored, because they've been working there for 10 years and they're frustrated and they have lots of pain. Yeah? And as it is, when we go to the doctor, somebody who has lots of pain and you ask them the right questions, he's going to talk like a waterfall, like about all this pain. And then you know everything about this, uh, or you know a lot of information anyway. And so once you do this, yeah, um, the, the third step that a lot of, lot of people and the cold calling process also don't have on the, on the radar is, prof, uh, is referral. After you do this uh, gathering information profiling, Then you try to get a referral. So basically, um, when you're, first of all, it's very important and very difficult to find the right decision maker. Maybe you have researched, done some research, but you don't even get through. So how do you really know this is the right decision maker? In many cases, especially when it comes to bigger companies and you're within your target market, it's that. Um, there's not only one decision maker, there's various decision makers. You know, one decision maker maybe uh, makes a decision to 80% and another one has maybe 20% or 60, 40 or whatever. But there's not, never ever, it's just it's uh, one decision maker that, who does all the decisions to 100%. So when you talk, if you, if you get a hold, if you can hold, get, if you get hold of an influencer who is really willing to talk and you get friendly with him and everything, and he might be even give you in the end, in most cases, one or even more really good preferreds. So um, maybe, <laughs> um, in this case, then you know you maybe get the you get to know of other people within the company. Even then, um, after the referral, you can go back here and say, well, um, I got this referral, but maybe this person doesn't want to be named or whatever, then you just do this anonymously, you know, just on occasion, but then you can also go there and say, well, um, maybe this person here gave me new decision makers, yeah, that I didn't even know before, because they are not in LinkedIn, 
Yeah, they are not somewhere in Google. I can just Google around and, and do my research. There are a lot of decision makers I didn't even think of. You know, and he maybe give you give me an, another another set, maybe even set of uh, yeah um, decision maker, maybe even a bunch of decision makers, uh, different in different departments. Lots of information. Then I can go back to four point five. And then I actually do my call call again, which is then not really as cold anymore because I've been done a lot of through, through this whole process and I've been doing a lot of research on uh, research not only like in the internet like researching, but researching by talking, by engaging, having conversations with people within the company. And this is basically, basically research um, on the spot. Yeah? So basically, um, this is um, one method, this is the way how you could work and improve your results in the cold calling process quite, yeah, quite dramatically. Yeah? A lot of people, they get just try identify some kind of decision maker either that buy some some contacts from an address broker who in most cases are out of date anyway and then you get embarrassed you know asking for some person who doesn't even work there anymore yeah or you do some research in linkedin and even the even the contacts in linkedin in many cases are not up to date yeah so uh, in in eighty percent of the cases, you get stuck here very very quickly. So what you need to do is you need to gather information. You need to gather information no matter how, no matter with whom, you know. And there's always people in every every company. It's very important that are willing to talk, willing to have a chat with you. There always are. Just imagine you working in a company yourself. The different people who are there different characters of people. There are always some people who never talk a lot and then there are always pe people in, you meet in the kitchen and they chat all the time. You want to meet these, you want to get hold of these people who, who chat all the time and yeah, get chatty with them, you know. Then you, then you receive your same information, you do your profile on the spot, you research the, while engaging and having conversations, maybe even getting referrals and uh, by with this, uh, after this process, having referrals, you get maybe a new, new set of decision makers you couldn't even think of before because they're nowhere to be found, not in Google, not in LinkedIn, not in Sing, not wherever. And then you go back to the actual call calling process, which is then not so cold anymore because you have all this information. Yeah. And uh, this makes your call calling a little bit, so to say, hotter, yeah? a little bit warm calling kind of style. This is where you want to go. Yeah, you always want to wrap around. You always want to wrap your cold calling into some kind of context. Yeah, that makes it warm calling. You know, so then you also easier get through to the actual decision makers you wanted to talk to in the first place. So this is my advice. This is the method. This is how we work for the German market. If you have more questions, please contact me or leave me a note in the, in, the, in the comments or give me a thumb up for this video and then thank you very much when I say watch this video my name is Thomas Klein from Klein Marketing in Germany if you have any more questions about the German market let's have a chat bye bye see you